It's on my life around. 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 Clap your hands, all ye people, and shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Please, you may be seated. It is my new dawn era. We call ourselves to worship in this fourth service, reading Psalm 47 responsibly, 1 to 9. Oh, clap your hands, all ye people. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Verse 2. He shall subdue the people under us and the nations under our feet. Verse 4. God is gone up with a shout. The Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Verse 6. For God is the king of all the earth. Sing ye praises with understanding. 8. And let's read verse 9 together. One to go. The princes of the people are gathered together, even the people of the God of Abraham. For the shields of the earth belong unto God. He is greatly exalted. You are welcome. Erase my new dawn era. Please, we shall be listening to the following faith tabernacle announcement. Number one. Covenant Hour of Prayer continues tomorrow, Monday to Saturday. We must all take advantage of this platform, particular edification. Time is 5.30 to 30 a.m. Number two, Believers Foundation class hold this Monday for all new converts in various locations, cut across Lagos and Ota. All our new converts and new members are admonished to take advantage of this very important platform for particular empowerment that will result in victorious living. Time is 6 to 7.30 p.m. And number three, praise the Lord. Our week of spiritual emphasis for November 2018, hold this week from Wednesday 7th to Friday 9th, November 2018. As our custom is, we shall be waiting on the Lord in a fast for our desired turnarounds, both as a church, as individuals for the month of November, and pray with the communion at our various Zona Fellowship Centers. Time is 6 to 8 p.m. Number four, good news. The final one night with the king for the year comes up on Friday. The night of November 2018. 
it shall be a night to be much remembered as God descends in the midst of his people to do his work. His strength works or perform his acts. His strength acts. We are all expected to put on our royal apparatus, that is, our garment of praise, to provoke the fearful favor of God through high praises. We shall surely return with the balance of our new, year, new dawn order of testimonies in Jesus' name. Time is 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. Please note that there shall be no broadcast to any of our religious persons across Lagos and Ota and Avirus. Number five, praise the Lord. Yoruba interpretation takes place at the Faith Entrance Gallery in all the services. All our con converts or invitees who require interpretation are admonished to take advantage of this provision. Number six, we have observed that the number of worshippers do not get into the sanctuary or the overflow tents while services are ongoing, but rather keep moving around the tabernacle. We hereby admonish every worshipper to be properly positioned in God's presence for the desired turnaround encounters. We have also mandated church officials to ensure that all worshippers are either in the sanctuary or in the overflow tents except when anyone needs to use the restroom. In addition, the church security service group has also been instructed to ensure that no one loiters around the car park areas during services. We are all admonished to comply with this instruction and be blessed as you do. Amen. Number seven, good news. Five intended couples were this weekend. We are, all ad, we are all admonished to stand in the gap for them in prayers and share in the joy. Time is 11 a.m. Number eight, we are still fellowship. Our house to house fellowship hosts every Saturday. We are all expected to be part of this for speaker growth and development. Time is 5 to 6 p.m. Lastly, number nine, praise the Lord. And next Sunday, the level of November 2018 shall be our special communion service. It shall also double as Osana service. Come expecting divine visitation via the world, the communal table, and high praises. Service schedule is as usual. Jesus is Lord. It is testimony time. As you listen to the following documented testimonies, you shall be blessed. Number one, entitlements of seven years fully paid via prophetic word. My entitlement has been held in my place of work for seven years. I came to this church believing God for change of story. Thereafter, the Holy Spirit instructed me to pray for the release of my entitlements, which was delayed for seven years, and I obeyed. After the personal supplication session, the bishop pointed towards my direction and declared, that thing which you prayed for is released supernaturally. I believed it and said, Amen. That day, I went to the office and told our secretary that the issue was settled and that no more complaining. Ten minutes later, my boss walked in and instructed that all entitlements be calculated and fully paid. I give God all the glory. The testifier is Ayo Friday. Give the Lord a big hand this morning. Number two, wonder job, wonder job via prophetic declaration. On Sunday, July 5th, I attended the four services. In the course of the fourth service, Bishop Boedepo declared that we should go and receive our miracle jobs. On Wednesday, I received a call to come to an organization the following day for a job. The next day, the person called again and told me to come, but I told him that I couldn't because I was engaged. Then he said that I should come on Friday, and I agreed. On getting to the company, I was told that my name had been sent to the headquarters of that company, and I was scheduled to resume on Monday, July 13. 
Later, I was asked if I wrote any test or filled the form, and I said no. Thereafter, the assistant manager and the receptionist wondered among themselves how I got the job. But I knew that it was the prophetic declaration from Bishop. I give him all the glory. The testifier is Daniel Sadie. In this prophetic blessing service, your own right word will come. It's my new dawn era. Please, let's listen to this prophetic, from the apostle of this commission, this prophetic memo titled, November 2018 Prophetic Focus. New dawn greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. I believe we have all had diverse encounters with the power of God in the month of October. But we must have to keep the fire burning and continue to crave for the new anointing for triumphant living. We must not watch the oil in our lamp get exhausted. We must continue to seek the refilling of the oil of joy in our lives. May the impact of our encounters as individuals in the month of October remain with us for life. Amen. But what is the Holy Ghost saying for the month of November 2018? We must recognize that praise is one of the most neglected weapons of war, yet it is one of the most effective of all spiritual weapons at our disposal. Praise, amongst others, provokes divine intervention, provokes supernatural victory, empowers our access to fresh oil, empowers our access to the realms of signs and wonders, praise warfare facilitates fulfillment of prophecy, and many more. From scriptures, we understand that praise is God's spiritual habitat. It is also the medium through which we transfer our battles to God. But we know that God cannot take over what we do not hand over. Furthermore, at every crossroad, we hear people say, it will take God. But what, whatever will take God will require praise. Because it takes praise to provoke divine intervention. From all the above, Praise is definitely a vital weapon to engage for victory, triumph, and breakthroughs in life. Fearful praise will always trigger fearful acts of God. Therefore, the prophetic focus for the month of November 2018 is, God works wonders through praise. Shall we echo it together in faith? God works wonders through praise. Our anchor scripture is Psalm 67. Verse 5 to 7. We shall all be engaging in praise warfare all through the month of November, and this shall culminate in the full delivery of the balance of our new dawn prophetic package for the year. Recommended books of the month authored by God's servant include Understanding the Power of Praise and Wonders of Praise. Remain ever blessed. Jesus is Lord. It is my new dawn era. This morning is my privilege to welcome a number of us who are here today, worshiping for the first time on Sunday like this at the Faith Tabernacle. If today is your first time at the Faith Tabernacle on Sunday, please would you rise on your feet this morning, wherever you are, rise on your feet very quickly. God bless you. Give Jesus a big hand, everybody, as they rise everywhere. He's worthy of praise, and he's worthy of glory. Please remain standing. Remain standing. Our officials will put into your hand a welcome package. You would also be given a slip to fill. As soon as you receive it, please, you may take your seat and begin to fill that slip in the course of this welcome. As soon as you receive your copy, please be seated and begin filling that slip in the course of this welcome. I want to welcome you today on behalf of Jesus Christ, the head of the church, and on behalf of his servant, the apostle over this commission, Bishop David Oedipo. I want you to know you have come today to a mountain of God and to a city of refuge. And that means every siege against your life and destiny comes to an end today in the name of Jesus Christ. According to scriptures, the company you keep determines what accompanies you. Lot was with Abraham, and the blessings on Abraham began to manifest upon Lot. You have come to this company of the blessed. The blessings of God here will begin to manifest upon your life. You have come to this company of testifiers. The testimony of Jesus here shall become your experience. You have come to this breakthrough company. You will never suffer breakdown again in the name of Jesus. However, in order to enjoy the blessings that flow upon this mountain, 
You must get planted and get rooted. The Bible says those who are planted in the house of the Lord, they will flourish in the court of our God. Therefore, my charge to you is settle down here. Engage every word that comes from this altar in teachings, instructions, and prophetic directions. And as you put God's word to work, his word will work wonders in every department of your life. And like God did for Isaac in the scriptures, when he told him to stay in the land, and he stayed there in obedience, engaging every word, every seed that he had and planted within the land. And within the space of one year, God blessed him to the point that his testimony became, became the envy of the entire nation. For you also, as you settle down in this place, engaging every seed of God's word you receive from this altar within the space of one year, just like God did for Isaac. He will turn your story around until your testimony becomes the envy of many in the name of Jesus. Somebody believe, say loud, amen. amen. One more time, all of our first time worshipers, please rise on your feet for a word of prayer and blessing. Please rise on your feet for a word of prayer and blessing. Now bow your head as we pray. Our Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for these precious ones you have drawn by your mighty hand. You brought them here for a blessing. And therefore, by your authority today, we decree to one bless in the name of Jesus. Whatever they left behind as a concern, Father, let it be converted into an open testimony. And in the name of Jesus, any one of them yet to be saved, we declare this day as the day of their salvation. We thank you for it, Lord, for in Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Amen and amen. Please be seated. Ensure that your forms are clearly completed and submitted to the official closest to you. Again, you're welcome and God bless you. Give Jesus a big hand. It's my new dawn era. Please listen to this epistle from the apostle over this commission, Bishop David Oedipo, titled, Declaring Shiloh 2018. <laughs> new dawn greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. Man was created for dominion at the beginning, but our dominion was lost to sin through the first Adam, while Christ restored the same back to us through redemption. We are in the last days. We are in the days of full restoration of dominion to the redeemed of the Lord. We are in the era of dominion of the church of Christ in these last days, when the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the saints of God. We are in the last days, when the law shall be proceeding from Zion. We are in the last days, when all the springs of life shall be domiciled in the church. Remember, the church is not a building. The church is a people, the redeemed of the Lord. The church is the body of Christ, the fullness of him that fill all things. We understand that by redemption, we have been repositioned far above all principalities and powers. But as we all know, authority cannot be conferred. It cannot be achieved. Authority can only be conferred. Beg your pardon. It cannot be achieved. Furthermore, we should all be reminded that Shiloh is not a church anniversary but a place for taking delivery of all our hanging inheritance in Christ. Shiloh is not a church program, but a mountain of answered prayers after the order of Anna. Shiloh is a prophetic platform for the confirmation of dominion, both on us as a church and as individuals, so as to subdue the land before us and many more. Therefore, the theme of Shiloh 2018 is dominion. Shall we declare it together? And the anchor scripture is Daniel chapter 7 and verse 27. Shall we declare it together? And the anchor scripture is Daniel chapter 7 and verse 27. Furthermore, as we all know prophetically, Shiloh is ordained a platform for confirmation of dominion upon members of the winner's family, as it is written. And the whole congregation of the children of Israel assembled together at Shiloh and set up the tabernacle of the congregation there. And the land was subdued before them. Therefore, at this 20th Shiloh, every participant shall encounter confirmation of dominions in all areas of our lives. Every participant at Shiloh 2018 shall have definite encounters with the world for their supernatural change of story. Remain ever blessed. Jesus is Lord. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. It is my new dawn era. In this service, it is offering time. 
I said it is offering time. If you have not done so yet, quickly begin to package your worship offering, your tithe, which is 10% of God's increase upon your life, and any other seed that you have brought into God's presence to honor him this morning. And as we do so, I want us to be reminded of God's word in the book of Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9 and 10. Honor the Lord with your substance, with the first fruit of your increase. He said, then your barns shall be filled with plenty, and your presses will burst forth with new wine. That shall be our portion in the name of Jesus Christ. If you have done that, quickly rise in your feet with me right now. Lift up your seed before the Lord, and from the depth of your heart begin to present it unto him, giving thanks and praise unto his name. As you offer your seed, your tithes, your offerings unto the Lord with gratitude this day. Lift your voice and speak to him, giving him thanks, knowing that he has ministered the seed to you and is multiplying it even as you sow it. Father, thank you for in Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Keep your seed lifted, Father. In the name of Jesus, we have come before you this day, presenting unto you our tithes, our offerings, and various seeds. To every tither, let the heavens remain open. Let the devourer be rebuked. Let blessings continue to pour out. In the name of the Lord Jesus, to every seed sower, let the seed be multiplied. Thank you for it, Lord. In Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. Please take your seat comfortably. Cast your seat joyfully as we receive the ministry of the Faith Tabernacle Choir.
offering, everybody. Amen. If you are happy to see the first Sunday in the month of November, give the Lord a shout of victory. Amen. Please lift up your two hands to heaven and let's give honor to whom honor is due. Give it to Jesus. Has he done you well? Give it to Jesus. Has he honored his word in your life? Give it to Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now ask him to speak to you today. Give you an encounter of a lifetime. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Please lift up your two hands. Father, we give you thanks for the privilege to be in your presence. No one can come except you draw him, and you draw us to bless us. For blessed is the one that you choose, and whom you cause to approach unto you. Jesus, we are here because you draw us. You drew us to be here, and you drew us to bless us. Let your blessing locate everyone here today. In the name of Jesus, they write the story of everyone yet again. Yeah. Open new chapters to everyone by your word today. Yeah. And take all the glory. Yeah. In Jesus' precious name. Yeah. Give the Lord a big hand and take your seat. <laughs> the prophetic focus for the month of November is God works wonders through praise. Can I have you say that with me? I'm the Lord, I change not. That's what he said. That is known as holy as the Lord. Is fear and praise doing wonders. Praise is the atmosphere for the manifestation of the wonder walking God. We create an atmosphere for him to walk by praise. Praise is comely unto God. He can't turn down the invitation of praise. Wherever praise is, their God is. He inhabits the praise of his people. And it's the wonder walking God. You will see the raw wonders of God in your life this year. And this month is ordained to create that atmosphere of wonders in your own life. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. One of the fruit of the spirit, one of the characteristics of the newborn spirit is joy. What do I call it? For the fruit of the spirit is uh, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness. Those are characteristics of the newborn spirit. And they call that the joy of salvation. The joy of salvation. And um, restore to me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy, thy free spirit. That's not ordinary joy. The Bible defines a joy unspeakable, full of glory. First Peter 1.8 whom having not seen, ye love, and whom thou do now see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable, full of glory. This is so vital because it, the custodian of every blessing that flows our way. The reason is, God dwells in place, and everything we need is in God. 
If God be for us, who can be against us? They that seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. You now have God in you, so you have everything you will ever need, everything I will ever need is in God, and God is in praise, so <laughs> you got it. That means as long as you are in praise, God is with you, is at work in your favor, is fighting your battle, and you are winning all the way. So, every anti-praise forces working against anyone's destiny, I command them cost today. Paul said, rejoice in the Lord always and again I say rejoice. He said, rejoice evermore. Man, that, <laughs> why? Everything you need is in it. Everyone that is truly committed to celebrating God as a lifestyle, he ends up a celebrity. David was praising God seven times a day. How many times a day? It's as if he was the only king that ever ruled in Israel. Seven times a day. Addiction to praising God makes a celebrity of the believer. Just praising him because everything that makes great, that makes life buoyant, is in God and God is in praise. In his presence, he shows us the path of life. So we are not guessing. Glory to God. I pray that no one will miss the prophetic package for this great month. Engaging the power of praise for supernatural turnaround. Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 17 to 19 is the anchor scripture. Although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall the fruit be in the vines, the labor of the olive shall fail, and the fields shall yield no meat, the flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stalls. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. <laughs> and the Lord, God is my strength. He will make my feet like I speak as I do so. And it will cause me to walk upon my high places. Never mind your present situation. Praise will deliver your portion. He said, He shall choose our inheritance for us. In the midst of praise, he will deliver your portion to you. Don't let your situation make you miss your portion. Although the fig tree shall not blossom, nothing may appear to be working. But if you won't stop celebrating God, he will make your feet like hands feet and get you to walk upon your high places. You are the one God is talking to. You will never end your journey in the valley. You are redeemed for the mountain top, and you must get there. Yeah. You are a city set upon a hill, you cannot be hidden. Yeah. The Lord will cause your star to rise. Yeah. Yet I will rejoice, and then it will make my feel like I speak, get me to walk over my high places. Depression. It's a strategy of the devil to make you miss God and miss your place in destiny. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I will rejoice and be glad. I lift up my voice to sing praise to the Lord. This is the day 
he has made. Watch everyone that celebrates God genuinely is on his way to becoming a celebrity. I know whom I believe. <laughs> Grace to keep celebrating God as a lifestyle. I release it upon your life today. <laughs> Do you know that in 37 years, no concern has been mentioned on this altar. How many notices that? That is, ah, oh my <laughs> No concern has been mentioned here. Ah, you know why? It keeps concerns away. Shall we praise the name of the Lord now? You see, he's blessed us so much. God is so great. And that's the truth. Speak of his loving kindness in the morning and his faithfulness every night. Then we'll exalt your horn like the horn of a unicorn. You keep on enjoying fresh oil. Fresh oil come through continuous praise. Amen. <laughs> Our God anointed. I mean, and you can anoint you except in his presence. So how to be in the presence of Samuel before you could anoint him. And let us enter into his gates with what? Thanksgiving. Into his courts with praise. Let's bless him. And then he can anoint us afresh. Praise God. If you won't stop talking about your woes, you never come out of them. Count your blessing, name them one by one. I don't care what you are going through, what you have gone through triumphantly, there are more. Yes. Amen. Amen. Many of you have never been on oxygen, have you? you do you know the meaning? No. <laughs> I am on oxygen. Oxygen is atmosphere. No, no, no. You need to know the other thing I'm talking about. Many of you have never been on oxygen. Many have never slept in the hospital the last 10 years. Some 20 years. And then because you have a business challenge, oh God, where are you? Are you still alive? Where are you now? Is this how to be God? Can I tell you how to be God? Can I advise you? Praise God. You know something? Complaining complicates matters. Nobody has ever complained this way out with God. The people complain. And God had it. And it displeased him. And his anger was kindled. Numbers 21. May you never see the anger of God in your life. That with all I've done for you, complain is the thing you now have for me. I come to healthy. No, thank you. You are living in your own house. No, thank you. You are drive, You have been driving cars now for the past how many years? No, thank you. You've never had an accident. No, thank you. When you had one, I rescued you from dying. Mm. Now you say because you supply something they have not paid you. You are saying, who am I? Oma. <laughs> Is this how to respond? The people complain and it displeased God. And his anger was kindled among them. Mele Bolorum me jao, Mele Bolorum me sorte, O delight, a war, Mele Bolorum. If you have lost anything, God is the reason why you have not lost everything. Come and give him praise, everybody. I pray that everything murmuring and complaining in anyone here dies today. You can only praise your way out. You can't complain your way out. You can't mumble your way out. They that mumble in the wilderness were destroyed of the destroyer. First Corinthians 10 10. Neither mumble here, some of them also mumbled and were destroyed of the destroyer. Why am I saying this? You can't praise God effectively with complaints and murmurings in your heart. Is any Mary? Let him sing. You can't sing except you are truly joyful. But oh God, look at me. Hmm? Look at me. All my peers. May you not know where all your other peers are. <laughs> Many have gone to the grave longest time. Many are in psychiatric home. 
Many are merely existing, they are not living. Ooh, so you're, by comparing yourself with anybody else, you are not wise. If you know how what God what has caused God to keep you where you are now, you'll be dancing forever, be afooted. You'll be dancing forever, be afooted. Now, in the name of Jesus, nothing will block your breakthrough praise this month. Very quickly, what is in praise? Among others, revelation is in praise. And my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. You can't know God any more than you praise him. Genuine praise ushers the believer into realms of unlimited revelation. It keeps showing you the path of life as you gain access to his presence and live in his presence. I have a song as in the night, so sing in the night, that's what it means. Amen. And the Lord shall cause his glorious voice to be heard. That's what they call Rema. Rema is the ultimate of revelation. God speaking to you directly from his word. My son, my prosperity plan is not a promise. That's God coming down. Glory to God. And when Rema comes, faith comes alive. Faith does what? You can't hear from God and doubt him. Hello? No one hears from God and doubts him. His voice is mightier than the voice of many waters. Every encounter with Rema steers supernatural faith. Steers what? And praise is our access to Rema. And faith is a guarantee for victory. So, Revelation delivers from destruction, delivers from frustration. Arise, shine, because your light is come. Because it will rise and shine. That's one key one that we have in praise. Number two, praise facilitates fulfillment of prophecy, as in the case of Abraham. Romans chapter 4, verse 16 to 21. Therefore, it's of faith that it might be by grace to the end that the promise might be sure to all the seed, not only to that which is of the law, but also to that which is of faith, the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. Now, as it's written, I have made thee. God told them, I have made thee a father of many nations. Before him whom he believed. You can't but believe when God speaks to you. Amen. Who kicks the dead? And cause those things that be not as though they were. Now, who against hope believed in hope? Nothing can make you doubt a word from God. Praise God. You may doubt a word from a preacher, a teacher, or anything you read in a book, but when you hear from God, sir, He sets you in supernatural motion. Nothing can make you look back when God speaks to you. My, from this month, you won't lack access to Rema in your life. Yeah. And praise is the platform that provides that access. Against hope, he believed in hope. And may become the father of many nations. According to that which was spoken, come and say spoken. God spoke it to him. Amen. God spoke it to him. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. I'm painfully persuaded that what God has spoken 
he was also able to perform. That's how Isaac came. Every prophetic word is at the mercy of a place for life. Prophetic words are spiritual seeds. And praise is the way to water it. When you water the seed of prophecy, you have committed God to fulfill it. Can I hear your amen? amen. This is so important. Oh, yes, yeah, this is November. I've not seen any new dawn. You better change your position. Your new dawn is just at the door. But if you give in to murmuring and complaining, the devil will rob you of it. Amen. amen. Don't it tarry. Wait for it. For it shall surely come to pass. It shall not tarry. Every prophetic word has inbuilt capacity to fulfill itself. All we need is to get ourselves on key, celebrating God to prove our strong faith. You won't miss your portion. Now, what is the capital thing that praise holds for us? Praise is one vital way to invoke divine presence. And divine presence, of course, our greatest asset as believers. See with me, divine presence is my greatest asset in the journey of life. Because if God be for you, what? Who can be against you? God inhabits the praises of his people. So his presence is guaranteed by your praise. God guarantees you and I his presence through a lifestyle of praise. Because God never loses any battle. His presence is our guarantee for lifelong victory. Supernatural breakthrough. In the journey of life. We saw that picture painted graphically here in Psalm 114, verse 1 to 9. When Israel went out of Egypt, the house of Jacob from a people of strange language, he said, Judah was his sanctuary and Israel his dominion. The sea saw it, saw the presence of God, that's the it, and fled. Noiseless breakthrough. Jordan was driven back. He said that he, the mountains skipped like rams and the hills like lambs. What a let thee, O sea, that thou fledest, and no Jordan that was driven back? And no mountains that did skip like rams and little hills like lambs? He went on and said, Tremble thou at, at the presence of God. At the presence of the God of Jacob. Now, so, <laughs> barriers tremble at his presence. Obstacles clear the way at his presence. And praise is what invokes his presence. So, with praise, barriers clear off your path. Obstacles clear off your way. Your access to your promised land just made open. Now, in the name of Jesus, everything standing on your way to your promised land, I decree that they clear off this month. That's why praise is a guarantee for a life of noiseless breakthrough. They were not pushing nothing. Everything was pushing itself in their favor. Therefore, every closed door against your life 
will start opening up on their own accord. <laughs> Paul and Silas were, they prayed and some praises, and the prisoners heard them, and suddenly, whoo, there was an earthquake. Praise! And every man's chain was broken. The doors were open, and everyone's bands were loosed. Glory to God. At the instance of praise, In the name of Jesus, every form of imprisonment that the enemy have put anyone here, you are coming out this month. Many will come out here today. That prison cloth is taken off your body. That slavery wear is off your body. That captivity uniform is torn off your body. Yeah. Also, we notice that divine presence is the secret behind all exploits in the kingdom. All. Nicodemus said to Jesus, No one can do these things except God be with him. Jesus said, John 8 29. He that sent me is with me. My father has not left me alone because I do always the things that please him. And he went on and said in John chapter 14, he said, my father, we dwells in me. He doeth the works. You see, the John 14, 10. Now, that's to tell us the power of divine presence in the life of a man. Now, we saw this picture graphically in the life of Joseph. And the Lord was with Joseph. Genesis 39, verse 2. And he was a prosperous man. How can a slave be a prosperous man? God was with him. <laughs> and was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. And because his master saw that the Lord was in him, and that he made all that he did to prosper in his hand, he found grace in his eyes and committed everything that he had into the hand of a slave. How God was with him. The proof of God's presence will begin to manifest in a new way in your life from today. God was with him. God was with him. He got to the prison, and the Lord was with Joseph, and showed him mercy, and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. What? And the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's hand all the prisoners that were in the prison. What kind of boy is that? What made it happen? The Lord was with Joseph. You won't miss God anymore in your life. Yeah. With the manifest presence of God in your life, you never suffer misfortune anymore. Yeah. You can't carry God's presence to an interview and you are rejected. God's presence can't sit down in your business and the business is stranded or grounded. Now, wait a minute. In the name of Jesus, God's manifest presence will keep showing up everywhere you go from now. Praise also provoke supernatural returns on our seed sown, bringing about fearful blessings in return. In Proverbs chapter 12, 
and verse 14. A man shall be satisfied with good by the fruit of his mouth, and the recompense of a man's hand shall be rendered unto him. What he does with his hand will find returns through the fruit of his leaves. Now, what is the fruit of our leaves? Hebrews 13, 15. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is, the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. So what is the fruit of our lips? Offering the sacrifice of praise to God continually in season and out of season. When things are working, and when they appear not to be working. That is the fruit of our lips that guarantee returns on the seeds we are sown with our hands. So, Proverbs 12, 14, slash Hebrews 13, 15, clearly explains it. And then, of course, <laughs> Psalm 67, verse 5 to 7. Let the people praise thee, O God, let the people praise thee. Then shall they add ye that increase. Every investment of yours since the year began in terms of time, energy, and resources in pursuing after God and his agenda shall find supernatural returns this month. He said, God shall bless us and not the ends of the earth shall fear him. So relax. Anything you may have lost, you get it sevenfold back. That's the mystery of praise. It's our sacrifice of praise to God continually so as to provoke returns on our seed soul. You never labor in vain again. Yeah. Let me hear your loudest amen. Yeah. You never labor in vain again. Yeah. Your labor will not be wasted again. In Joel chapter 1 and verse 12, it said, All the harvest of the field is perished because joy is withered away from the sons of men. Where your joy stops is where your harvest stops. Therefore, rejoice in the Lord always, and they say again, Rejoice. Rejoice evermore. Don't destroy your harvest. Destroy, rejoice evermore, evermore, in season, out of season, everywhere, every day, rejoice. Glory to God. <laughs> now, receive that baptism of joy afresh on your life. Why am I saying this? Our praises will be noise in the ears of God without joy in the heart. Is any merry, let him sing. Otherwise, a song will be a noise in my ears. Is any among you afflicted, let him pray. Is any merry, let him sing psalms. Our songs are only acceptable from a merry heart. From a merry heart, a joyful heart, a non-complaining heart, a non-murmuring heart, a non-depressed heart. I cause every siege of depression around anyone's life. Very important. The people prayed, Ezekiah leading in that prayer, or Joshua, please. He said, Oh Lord, we now not judge these people. For we have no might against this great company that cometh against us. Neither know we what to do, but our eyes are on you. Now, can I tell you the good news? Praise is what to do when you don't know what else to do. What are we to do? Praise. What are you to do? Praise. That's what they did. He said, You wanted to fight in this battle. They say, What's the meaning? He said, Set up singers now. That's what it means. So I can take over. You know God cannot take over what you don't hand over. We hand over our battles through praise. How do we hand them over? 
How do we hand over our battles? How do we hand over our battles? That's the protocol. You can't break it. We hand over the battles of our life to God through what? Praise. Through what? Praise. So they began to sing. And as they began to sing and to praise, what happened? God sent ambushment against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Montseah, which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. Has God changed? As you begin to sing and to praise from this service, my God, we set ambushment against your enemies and they shall all be smitten. Somebody believe that? Let me hear your loudest amen. You shall not need to fight in this battle, means hand over the battle to me. How do we hand it over? Come and sing. Sing my praise and I will take it over. As you are singing, I'm grabbing it from you. Amen. As you are singing, I'm grabbing it from you. It takes over. It takes over. In the name of Jesus, the battles of your life will be taken over by God today. So when you are dancing, it's like you are holding a button. The God of Abraham, take it now. Isaac and Jacob. You are handing over the battle to him, and when he picks it, Everybody will stand at the standstill. Amen. He's the man of war. Nobody ever gets him defeated. Now, the good news is, you are out of every form of defeat finally today. Thank you, Jesus. Praise is what to do when you don't know what else to do. You hand over your battle to God through praise. And when God takes over, the concern is over. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. Who is God committed to bless? Because we are here for the list of blessings. We are already getting those blessings now one by one. In the name of Jesus, you will know today in the history of your life as a day of encounter with the blessings of God. Balaam said, Behold, I have received commandment to bless and he has blessed, and I cannot reverse it. What God confirms is his covenant of blessing as the prophets of God proclaim it. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Who is God committed to bless, or who has God covenanted to bless? Because it is his blessing, his covenant of blessing, we are proclaiming that he confirms. Now, who has God covenanted to bless? Number one, he has covenanted to bless the redeemed. Amen. Acts 326, unto you first, God have raised up Jesus, his son, sent him to bless you in turning away every one of you from his iniquities. He saves us to bless us. So God has covenanted to bless the redeemed of the Lord. Christ has redeemed them from the cause of the law by being made a cause for all of us, written cause everyone that hanging upon the tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come unto us who are Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might obtain the promise of the Spirit through faith. So we are redeemed into his blessing. Can I hear your amen? amen. Who has God covenanted to bless? God has covenanted to bless the obedient. 
Come and say, the obedient. the obedient. If you will hearken to my voice and observe to do all I tell you to do, I'll set your heart above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings will come to you and overtake you for your obedience. God has covenanted to bless the obedience. May you enjoy obeying God with delight from now. Yeah. Obedience may be costly, but the end result is priceless. Obedience may be costly, but the end result is priceless. Grace to walk in delight, some obedience. Receive it today. Amen. Hear what he said. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delights himself greatly in his commandment. So it's not about obeying God, it's obeying God with delight. Delight some obedience, not burden some obedience. <laughs> Jeremiah 23, verse 33 to 39, he said, Don't tell me again the burden of the Lord. You tell me that, I'll punish you. <laughs> Every commandment of the Lord is to decorate your destiny. Don't ever see it as a burden. See it as another opportunity for another level of decoration. Can I hear your amen? Yeah. Hit and run will help you. Therefore, be ye steadfast. Always abide in the words of the Lord for as much as he know yeah, that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. You better get ready. Some just withdraw one hour more to their breakthrough. Some others withdraw just two days more. No, 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 no. I won't do it again. Who is losing? May you receive grace for the last some obedience from now. Yeah. Hear what he said in Psalm 112, that verse 1 to 3. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that great delights himself in his commandments. Well, he said, his seed also shall be mighty upon earth. So it doesn't stop with him. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Can you see that? Bring you into, into generational blessing. He said, wealth and riches shall be in his house. Your children's children will never beg bread. And his righteousness endure it forever. Your children's children will never go crooked. Yeah. Nobody in your children will be called a fraud star. Yeah. No one in your lineage will know the prison yard. Yeah. Our great delight in his commandment opens up our future, secures our posterity, guarantees our eternity. You better do it. Who has God covenanted to bless? Those who serve him. Thou shalt bless the Lord, serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless your bread and your water. Your children's children will never beg bread. Yeah. You will not wear rags in your old age. Yeah. Your children will never break your heart. Nothing will fail in your hand again. Yeah. Nothing will fail in your hand again. Yeah. He said, and I will take sickness from you. You can't serve two masters. You can't be serving God and be serving sickness at the same time. Satan was the one that banned that woman in Luke chapter 13. You can't be serving behind every sickness in satanic activities. And you cannot serve two masters. Because you are serving God, you will never serve sickness again in your family. So, there's a divorce between you, sickness and disease, and oppression of the devil, all the days of your life. Say with me, I cannot serve two masters. I cannot be serving my father, my heavenly father, and be serving sickness, which is perpetrated by the devil, at the same time. So help me, Jesus. 
If you came with any sickness here, as we begin to celebrate him, every sickness flees from your body. If they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. Who has God covenanted to bless? Every tither has committed God to bless him. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be made in my house, and prove me now herewith, if I will not open you the windows of heaven, and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Every tither is entitled to open heaven order of blessings. Therefore, I decree an end to scarcity in your life. An end to lack and want in your life. Abraham, the tither, the Bible said, and Abraham was old and sick in age, and God has blessed him in all things. All things. At his extreme old age. You never wear rags in your old age. <laughs> Jesus put his stamp on Titan. This ought you to have done and not to leave the other undone. Matthew 23 and 23. You pay tight of this and that. That's okay. But you have left the heavier matters of the law, which is uh, judgment, mercy. And fail this ought you to have done and not to leave tithing undone. Matthew 7 and verse 8. Here, I mean, sorry, Hebrews 7 8. Here, men that die receive tithes, but there he received them. So, Jesus is the one receiving our tithe in heaven. So, he could open the heavens to keep his covenant. In the name of Jesus. For every title in this commission, you never smell lack and want in your life. <laughs> Who has God covenanted to bless? As we round up, those who are committed to giving to the poor and the needy around them. We use just one scripture, Psalm 41. And verse 1 to 3. He said, Blessed is he that considereth the poor, the Lord will deliver him in time of trouble. What a blessing. You shall be delivered in time of your trouble. Yeah. Everyone you lend a happy hand to brings you these following blessings. He said, The Lord will deliver you in your time of trouble. Here, he said, The Lord will preserve him and keep him alive. And he shall be blessed upon the earth. And thou will not deliver him unto the will of his enemy. He said, the Lord will strengthen you upon your bed of languishing. It will make all your bed in your sickness. He said, get off and go to work. You'll never, never get down helping others. Grace to lend a happy hand to the needy around you as a lifestyle. Receive it now in the name of you. For he that giveth to the poor shall not lack. But he that hideth his faith shall have many a cause. Celebrate the opportunity to be of help to someone. Celebrate that opportunity. It is an opportunity to be blessed of God with what money cannot handle. You help someone get a child. You help somebody's children go to school. You help somebody find food on his table. What you are doing is invoking the blessing of Psalm 41, verse 1 to 3 on your life. You'll never suffer again. Yeah. Helping the needy gets you out of the least of the needy. You'll never suffer a setback again. John D. Rockefeller was to die at 52 because he was smitten with cancer 
at his terminal end. So the doctor said, well, you may not see your 52nd birthday. So he parted with all his texts in business to bless humanity, 50%. And God said, what? He went home at 93. Jesus destroyed the cancer. He preserved and kept him alive. Please, would you open your heart to bless mankind? Just open your heart and celebrate. Open your heart to bless mankind. It's not a gift, it's a choice. Open your heart to bless humanity around you and do that with joy and rejoicing. I can't explain how God has kept me bouncing up and down all my life. I've not been on vacation for 37 years and I'm still enjoying myself. My energy is full, full force. Don't have no problem. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. I am a beneficiary of Psalm 41, 1 to 3. I live inside of it. I'm enjoying it day and night. The next thing I need is what somebody else will need. Glory to God. I'm enjoying my life. I don't have no medication, not even vitamins. Checking me is a waste of time. That's not to check because I can't be unwell and not know. Amen. And I say, it appears you have a dick. No. Are you inside my head? <laughs> Glory to God. Now, in the name of Jesus, no one will miss that blessing. Yeah. It's not about how much you have, but where your heart is. Yes, it's about your heart. It's nothing else. It's about your heart. It's about your heart. When we were in school many years ago, and then after the vacation, I said, somebody may be stranded in, in school. Let me go find out. So I went there, and I met someone weeping there. Hello, Shegun, what's happening here? Shegun is blessed of God today. Hallelujah. Lifted by God today. God. He wants to represent this nation in one country. Amen. Amen. He reminded me. He said, what's about this? He didn't have that much money. I said, wait a minute, I'm coming. Mm. I wasn't earning nothing. Mm. I told my grandmom, I said, look, there's somebody that needs to be helped. Oh, he said, how much will he need? Take it. We didn't borrow him, we gave him. There, were no, there was no, no banking thing that you go to bank and say you are collecting SMS or whatever they call it. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. If they don't get one passenger that is going somewhere that can help you with the money, and if he spends it on the way, that's the end. Okay, he went home. Many, many years later, our path crossed. He's a member of this church today. Hallelujah. Amen. Please enjoy it. If you eat all you have, a time will come you may not have what to eat. It is what to give that God multiplies. What to have does not come multiply. What you have does not multiply. It's what to give. Please enjoy it. I release that blessing on your life today. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. You are blessed. Every blessing released on you today is stamped on your life forever. That's what makes it work. Lift up your right hand where you are and give God thanks for his good and his message endures forever. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Yeah. Every grace you desire in your life is released upon you tonight. Yeah. Some of these kids are not going to primary school. That's within your ability. If you are working and God is blessing you, help out. Somebody does not want to eat after church today, and you are aware of it. Help him out. Every little, little thing you engage with creates a future for you. Please do it with joy. Let me hear your loudest amen. Yeah. 
Very quickly, you are here in this service and you are not born again. I'd like to pray with you. That is where your journey into his blessings begins. Wherever you are today, you want to be saved. You want your sins forgiven. You want your name written in the book of life. Remember too that Ezekiel said, only the living, the living, he shall praise thee. Until one has Christ, he has no life. So he can't praise anybody. He can't, he can't get no result in praise. It will be mere entertainment. Everybody here today that wants to be saved, please stand to your feet and I'll pray with you. You want to give your life to Jesus today, please stand. You want to be born again today, please stand. You want your name written in the book of life today, please stand. Wherever you are, stand to your feet. I'm praying for you right there. We're about to celebrate him right now, and you're going to see the raw manifestation of God's presence in your life. Please stand to your feet. Now, there are people also that want to, that need to rededicate their life to Christ. Wherever you are, you want to rededicate your life to Christ today, please stand to your feet. I will be praying for you. Stand to your feet. God bless you. You want to dedicate your life to Christ today, please stand to your feet. Jesus loves you. Everybody standing both in the first and second call. Please move to the nearest eye to where you are, and there we'll be praying for you. Now, please, ushers, would you please do this very quick? Make available to everyone in this service. God works wonders through praise and November prophetic uh, focus. Please do that. Declaring Shiloh 2018, and then Shiloh 2018 intercession prayer guidelines. Please do that very quickly in the name of Jesus Christ. Glory to God. Glory to God. Just two, three very important information for emphasis. This week is a spiritual week of emphasis. And the last one for the year. So get yourself ready and be part of it. Commit yourself to it because by the next one, we're already in Shiloh. And there's something about the last. God deserves the best for the last. And interestingly also, it is the last one night with the king for the year. It will be a turnaround night for every one of us. So if you need to take a day off, please do. And come camp in his presence. And watch out for that hour. And join in that holy praise. And see Jesus carry a whip entering into your life and casting out everything buying and selling around your life. The same way he did in the temple. So get prepared for it in the name of Jesus Christ. Well, another good news. Praise God. By the prompting of the Holy Ghost, we had these specialized healing services, miracle services, in the last month, last week of September this year. Um, it was awesome. God's presence was thick. Diverse healings. People on the wheelchair jumping up. People carried inside, standing up and walking. Because God has ordained it. And one of the elders gave a testimony this morning who was delivered from cancer of the prostrate in that side. They carried him from home. He was blood only from urine, blood only, blood only. And that has continued for about 10 years. Jesus terminated it there and then. So from next Sunday, we'll be, we'll, next Tuesday, 10 to 12, it is only for the afflicted, the oppressed, the one imprisoned by the devil, the mentally derailed, the one who fettered day and night by forces of wickedness. Please bring them in. Jesus will liberate them. People come from all over the world to this place. Jesus is whom they have come to see. It will meet their needs. In the name of Jesus Christ. Glory to God. And so from next Sunday, because the fifth service has not been able to realize his mission of ministry of the needy, because everybody comes in. You want to lay hands, everybody in the world comes in there. And that can be very exhausting. So we'll be having our specialized miracle service that day, which is separated to ministering to the needy only. Can I hear your amen? Yes. They brought a number of people from the hospital here during that, those three days, and they were set free. Jesus has sent us his liberation mandate. No one shall be under oppression of any devil in this church more than a week. 
every Tuesday, whatever the devil has built up will be torn apart. And the name of the Lord shall be glorified. Everybody standing, please bow your heads for prayers. Lift up your right hand. In the name of the Lord Jesus, as you pray this prayer after me, your soul shall be rescued. Your sins shall be forgiven. Your name shall be written in the book of life. And it shall be a turning point in your life. Every one of you pray this prayer after me. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I surrender my life to you today. Forgive me all my sins. Wash me with your blood. I believe you died for me. On the third day you rose again that I might be justified. Right now, I believe my sins are now forgiven. I'm justified by your blood. I'm restored back to the faith. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. Amen. Keep your hands up as I pray. Father, I pray over these precious people. Your grace that brought them forth, let the same grace preserve them. In Jesus' name, the battle over your life is over today. I'm being graced to lead you over commerce life, which is your right in Christ. Receive that now in Jesus' name. And I cover each of you with the precious blood of Jesus. Remain covered until Jesus appears. You will run this race to the end. You never get stranded on the way. You make it through to heaven. You live a most enviable life on this earth. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Praise the Lord. Please, church, give the Lord a big hand for this precious soul, this hour. Amen. Glory to God. Shall we all rise, please? As they began to sing and to praise, heavens came down. How many want to see their heaven come down? How many want to see their father in heaven come down for your rescue? He's coming down now. He's coming down now. He's coming down now. Nobody will ever ask you again, where is your God? Yeah. Everybody called barren, your God is coming down now. Yeah. You shall be confirmed pregnant this month. Yeah. Everyone carrying a deadly disease, cancer, sickle cell, anemia, HIV, AIDS, hepatitis B, every blood disease, whatever kind. Now, in the name of Jesus, your God is coming down to bring you out of them all. He said, I've seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt. I've had their cries, therefore have I come down to bring them out of the land of Egypt to the land that's flowing with me and honey. Your praise will bring God down and as God comes down, it will bring you out. Every unwanted situation will give way to you right now. Now, lead us in praise. Receive our fresh garment of praise right now. And dance unto the Lord. Don't bother about anybody around you. Dance your way out of that predicament. That's God's promise for this time. Quick.
gathers to mourn in your home. No bad news from your children and relations. The balance of your new dawn prophetic package shall be fully delivered. This month is declared your month of harvest. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. If you Diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord your God and observe to do what He commands you to do, He will set you on high above all nations. Everyone that will be committed to the commandment of praise this month, you will see the wonders of God. He said, Let the saints rejoice in glory, let them sing aloud upon their bed. Now, He's talking about your bedroom. Singers know you can't be singing aloud lying down in bed. No. He's talking about your bedroom. Give him the hardest praise in your room. Celebrate him the highest. Give him the best of your dances in your room. Somebody here was selling some product and will carry it on his shoulder because he couldn't get a job, so he got, got a sales rep. And when he had this commandment, he danced around that stuff with all his might. Following day, he was in the marketplace with that stuff on his shoulder, and somebody passed by and said, hello, you sell this? And somehow, favor met him. He said, meet me in the office where this is produced. He got a job as a manager. <laughs> where was he says, right? Anything you dance around, we turn around. <laughs> so let's take responsibility and give God the best of praise we can afford and see how it beautifies. He said it will beautify the meek with salvation. The ones who will praise him in the dance, who will celebrate him with all that they have. Verse 3 said, let them praise him in the dance, the dance, the dance. Then it will beautify them with salvation. Whatever is missing of your redemptive package shall be duly delivered this time. And every Sunday this month shall be a Hosanna Sunday. We'll be dancing our way into realms of glory. And nobody will lack a testimony. Every week of this month, we deliver a testimony in your heart. <laughs> Lift up those two hands and give God thanks. Shall we together share the goodness of the Lord in fellowship? Surely, God's goodness and goodness shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall do in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. It's my new dawn era. And so is mine. What eyes have not seen or ears have shall be the order of the day in my life this year. Amen. 